February 17th, 1906. That was the first meeting between Pitt and West Virginia. Since then, 186 meetings. Tonight, we add another chapter into the storied history book that we call the Backyard Brawl. Minutes ago, our man Chris Batola caught up with our key players for tonight's matchup. Xavier Johnson, sophomore, Trey McGowan, sophomore, one of the most dynamic backcourts in the ACC. This is who West Virginia has to deal with tonight. Derek Culver, 6'10", sophomore. Oscar Shibway, 6'10", one of the most imposing frontcourts in America. This is who Pitt has to deal with tonight, the backyard brawl. Let's do this. Let's do this. The backyard brawl underway. The Oakland Zoo in full force tonight inside the Peterson Event Center. Take a look at the series history again. These two teams have played each other more than they have played anybody else. Played every season from 1917 to 2011. Had a five-year hiatus. They have played each of the last three years, and West Virginia has come out on top. What an environment here tonight. Officials tonight, Bert Smith, John Gaffney, and James Breeding. And Trey McGowan's right there, one of the returning sophomores for this Pitt Panther team. And an exciting team to watch. Looks like we're ready to identity. They're gonna deny. And there is Trey McGowan's, one of that dynamic duo, that backcourt of Xavier Johnson and McGowan's. They are so good off the bounce. A lot of ball screens from Pitt. Everything starts for Pitt with those two sophomore guards. First foul on Jermaine Haley, the 6'7", senior from Vancouver, Canada. Panthers will try to inbound it. Oscar Sheebway takes it away. And immediately the Panthers get it back, but it goes out of bounds. And West Virginia will take possession. The West Virginia starting five. You know, Chris, both these teams are young. West Virginia maybe have, has a, a, a more seniors, but these are two young teams that struggled last year, and they're trying to find their footing here this season. And Pitt showing a 2-3 zone. They have not played a whole lot of zone this year. But I think the size of West Virginia concerning to Jeff Capel. Derek Culver's first shot off the mark. Sheeway with the rebound and the bucket. Oscar Sheeway, the 6'9 freshman out of the Republic of Congo. Well, he's one of the most heralded freshmen coming into college basketball this year. He is a monster. I mean, look at him physically. Like, that's a freshman, folks. They don't make them like they used to. This West Virginia team, 6'10 across the front line with Culver and Shibway, 6'7 at the two wing positions. They are a big and long basketball team. That's the second foul on Jermaine Haley already. Under a minute of playing time. And Haley will go to the bench. Immediately, Taz Sherman will come in, the 6'4 junior. That's a big foul. He led them in scoring, had 16 in their opener against Akron. He's a fifth-year senior. He's, you mentioned, Sam, how young both these teams are. He's one of the lone veterans in this game. Here comes Press Virginia immediately. And a jump ball called as Taz Sherman tangled up with Trey McGowan's on the floor. Well, that wasn't even in a trap. I mean, that was just mishandled. We all know how Coach Huggins likes to press and likes to have his defense up in your face. Ranks fourth in total wins among active D1 coaches behind the likes of Coach K, Jim Beheim, and Roy Williams. Taz Sherman's three, no good. And a scrum for the rebound. 
It'll be Panthers ball. This is going to be a very physical matchup. You can see right away. These two teams have no love lost between each other. Well, the game last year was an absolute war. Really physical. Over 50 fouls in that game. Pittsburgh had a huge win against Florida State to start off the ACC season and then had a bad loss to Nichols State here at home. They are 2-1 and one on the year. Another turnover by Pitt and Jeff Capel incredulous with this start. Those two guards, you've got to take care of the basketball if you're Pitt and they've got to find a way to hold their own on the glass. Three possessions, three turnovers as Jordan McCabe's three. No good. There's Shibwe on the boards again. And here comes Pitt, three on two. Trey McGowan's to the rim, off the back. And that's what he can do. He can push, and you like the early stuff where you don't have to play against the press or the half-court defense, but that's got to be finished. Here's Derek Culver in the paint. An awkward pass to Shibwe. I think he was trying to shoot that, but Oscar Shibwe, the first four points of the game to the standout freshman. I'm telling you, he's an absolute monster. You're going to hear his name a lot this year. This front line for West Virginia is going to be one of the most imposing, not just in the Big 12, but in the country. Yeah, Oscar Shibwe, he's just the second McDonald's All-American to enroll at West Virginia University. And you think with all the players they've had in the past, that wouldn't be true. But he really only picked up a basketball about five years ago. It's amazing to see how he has progressed here at West Virginia. And Coach Huggins says there is no ceiling for Oscar Shibwe. McGowan's to the rim, has it blocked by Taz Sherman out of bounds off of West Virginia. There's this block, and they're going to plug gaps. A nice job there by Derek Culver kind of stepping in. Their defense so alert. They react so well. First shot for Ryan Murphy, who's been their hottest shooter, goes long. And offensively, they're, they're very conventional. You're not going to see a whole lot of teams, first of all, play two 6'10 guys but really try to throw it into the post. And I think it's one of the other reasons Jeff Capel wanting to go to the 2-3 zone. He was concerned about, you know, with how big Pitt is on their wings with Haley and Emmett Matthews starting at both at 6-7. He was concerned about those two guys posting his guards. Second foul on Terrell Brown. And that could pose a problem for Pitt. West Virginia, they too had a down year last year. Four and 14 in the conference. Shibwe takes flight. Oscar Shibwe, the first six points for the Mountaineers. And you love the big to big pass, just the high low, and the size is a major factor early. How does Pitt make up for that size difference? Well, unless they can grow five inches <laughs> in the next 10 minutes. Uh, Dees Tony's shot, no good. Ryan Murphy now puts it to the floor. He gets fouled in the bucket. What a revelation Ryan Murphy has been, the transfer. He's really a perimeter shooter. That's what he's known for. But there's that strong drive to his left hand, and then there's the high-low. I mean, that's just not a lot of resistance. And again, I mean, off of their bench, you know, Pitt brings in Eric Hamilton, the grad transfer. They just don't have the size. And if you allow Shibwe to just camp in there and get that low, he's, he's going to be unstoppable. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Pitt putting some pressure on West Virginia now. Quick ball movement. Gets it to Jordan McCabe. Shot, and it's good. Emmett Matthews Jr., 6'7", sophomore from Tacoma, Washington, had 13.7 boards in their last win against Akron. Oh, 
Hamilton, the alley-oop to Adish Tony, no good. Pitt has missed some opportunities early on here. Shibwe on the post, and a foul. And what a catch that was by Shibwe. Folks, get to know this name. Oscar Shibwe, the freshman. He is an absolute monster and has made his impact felt three feet from the basket to start this game. Shibwe, you said it. He's a guy that you're going to want to get to know this season. He is. I mean, look, his physical stuff is obvious. And his story here tonight, I mean, he was recruited heavily by Pitt. It really came down to Pitt in West Virginia. And what's interesting, his host family is the same host family that hosted Sags Kanate, who was a West Virginia player. And so there's a connection there to Morgantown. And once he took the visit there, uh, they corralled him and ended up being a no-brainer. But he is... He is a beast. He's got a, I think, Bob Huggins wants him to become more engaged as a rebounder, more of a shot blocker. But look at him inside. I mean, just once he gets his position and gets deep, it's over. Ryan Murphy pokes that one away. The Pitt Panthers have struggled early on, trying to convert on some open opportunities. They're just one for six from the field. What do the Panthers need to do on offense to just try to settle down a bit? Yeah, they got to settle down. I mean, they have a missed dunk on the alley-oop. McGowan's missed a layup in the open floor. So they've had some decent looks. And when you set a screen in this game, you got to set it, especially if you're Pitt. Audis Tony, the baseline drive, no good. Blocked by Shibway, really just taken out of his hand. Emmett Matthews, Jr., Cross court pass, has Sherman in the corner, no good. And Trey McGowan's comes up with it. Xavier Johnson puts it to the floor, pass. nice pass. Audis Tony will go to the line and shoot two. And here's the thing about Shibwe, at, at his size, you know, he's 6'10", 260. He moves his feet pretty well. I mean, he keeps the ball on the baseline. And then Logan Rout comes over, and, and that's the thing. I mean, they start 6'10", 6'10". They bring in Logan Rout, who's 6'11". They're really big and tall up front. Eight fouls total already. Five for West Virginia. And we're just under 15 minutes here in the first half. What a year Culver had as he comes back into the game last year. Derek Culver, he's got an interesting collection of skills. Eight double-doubles last year, second to Diedrich Lawson in the Big 12. Only a sophomore. <laughs> Foul was on Logan Rout there. Once again, Pitt bringing some full-court pressure. And just a little 2-2-1 two -two here, and not trying to necessarily turn him over, trying to take some time off the shot clock, show a different look, and then back to the 2-3 zone. Here's Miles McBride, a standout freshman for West Virginia. He's been talked highly upon by Coach Huggins as well. Not a great pass there, but regains possession. Matthews Jr. with the three. Off the back iron, and a whistle blows. It's going the other way. Foul is going to be on Derek Culver, and this is trouble for West Virginia. That's his first, and Bob Huggins not happy. Oh, and it started with a block out. And you're going to see the box out here by Xavier Johnson, the guard. And that's a foul. I mean, he had good block out position. You just can't toss a guard to the side, as flimsy as we may be. McGowan's to the rim. Another whistle blows. How about nine fouls so far? Well, he said in this game last year there were over 50 fouls. West Virginia fouls a lot. It's what they do. And their opener against Akron, there were over 70 fouls in that game. They are physical, they get after it, they play hard, and fouling is a byproduct of that. That was a foul on Eric Hamilton, his first. Miles McBride played very well last time out, 11.6 boards, four assists. And that pass goes into the backcourt to nobody. And out of bounds. 
Hey, keep in mind, Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, number 15, Florida heads up to Storrs, Connecticut to take on UConn at Gamble. The last time the Gators came to Storrs was 2013. That was when Shabazz Napier hit that game winner at the buzzer in a Huskies 65-64 win. No longer are the Shabazz Napiers, the Ryan Boatwrights at UConn, but there's a good shot in the corner for Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy started at Charlotte, played for Mark Price. Mark Price ended up getting fired from there, ended up going to junior college, and Pitt found him. And that's what he does. A nice little under out of bounds. You get him coming off a screen. And he's led them in scoring in the early going of this season. A very, very good perimeter shooter. Ryan Murphy, five of the six points for Pitt so far, two for three from the field. Sean McNeil with the ball. Shibwe thought about it, puts it to the floor, rattles in and out, and Hamilton with the board and a foul going the other way. And that's a great defensive rebound by Hamilton. I mean, Pitt, Pitt needs guys who are going to get in the fight underneath. And you have to finish possessions, defensive possessions, with a defensive rebound. I mean, look at that up front for West Virginia. And already you're in the 1 1 with 13 27 left to go in the half, Chris. Pitt spent about 15 minutes today shooting free throws at their shoot around. And Jeff Capel said to his team, You're going to get these, we have to make them. Offensive rebound, Murphy pulls the trigger. No good. And a strong board and a foul once again. Hopefully you didn't have dinner plans or anything <laughs> after this, Sam. This uh, could be on a four-hour affair here. <laughs> We've got 12 fouls between the two. Seven for West Virginia, five for Pitt. Substitutions galore because early foul trouble is... Putting some guys on the bench. Miles McBride looking for help. Down low. Ooh. Over on the post. What a move. Stepped out of bounds. No good. Good move, though. It was a good move. I mean, you, you see the ceiling for this dude. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to get the angle there. Yeah, ooh, it's tight. But what, how about the move? Just crosses in front and finishes. Unanimous All Big 12 freshman team selection last year. And one. Xavier Johnson. Chase Harler for West Virginia went to the ground hard there. This is what Xavier Johnson does. He's got an unbelievably quick first step. And that's close because he's there. I don't know if the official thought he was in the restricted area, but a good drive. And that's what Johnson and McGowan's can do with their penetration. Get themselves to the foul line. Johnson has not played up to his capability early in this season. And they desperately need him. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's that's close. That's a, that's a charge if he's outside the restricted area. It's hard to get a look at his feet there. West Virginia hasn't scored in the last four minutes now. You know, Xavier Johnson says that he's the best Fortnite player on their team. Now, it's self-proclaimed. I think it's in dispute. <laughs> but he says that he's the best Fortnite and 2K player on the team. That foul was called on Xavier Johnson, a moving screen. Do you play Fortnite? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a video game. Are you? I play 2K. I'd love to yeah. have my hand with him at that. I, I don't even know what Fortnite is. I've, I've heard too much about it. My brother plays it. I, I, yeah, I have no idea. But yeah, Xavier Johnson, you, you talked about it too. Last year was the only player in the ACC with 15 points per game, four and a half assists. And look, you have two 
players in the backcourt for Pittsburgh returning, and Trey McGowan's and Xavier Johnson that Ooh. conceivably could be here for a while, and I think the Oakland Zoo would like that. He rises to the occasion. Yeah, again, has not played up to his capability. I think it's fed into some of the draft hype and all of that. But he rises to the occasion. What a move that was. The Pitt Panthers on a 7-0 run now. Down low, Culver. And he's fouled. It'll be on Eric Hamilton, his second. Look at this move right here. I mean, just a little dance step, a little shake, Ooh. the in out. I mean, that's beautiful. Look at this little shake, the in out. And he's got two defenders shaking, and then Culver coming up to help on what he thought was going to be a ball screen. He's no longer at the rim. And I think the only knock that some people have had on Xavier Johnson is the amount of turnovers. He has 11 turnovers so far this year. And Coach Capel says he'd like to see him take better care of the ball and just be smarter with the ball. Same goes for that guy right there, Trey McGowans. He says if they can do that, they can really be a force to be reckoned with in the ACC this year. They need to hit singles. They're trying to hit a home run every time they have the ball. Just hit singles, especially in a game like tonight. Just make the, the play that's there. Xavier Johnson takes it to the hole again, tries to dish. He does, there's Cool Belly. He puts it up and banks it in. Uh, Jeff Capel telling us to shoot around today. He was going to play Cool Belly just because of his size. Hasn't played a whole lot to start the year. How about the pass by Xavier Johnson to set him up? Two assists, four points for Xavier Johnson so far in this one. Matthews Jr., top of the key, no good. Harler with a strong rebound. There's that senior leadership looking for a timeout called. Well, the new Oakland Zoo, we're going to get a look behind the scenes. Head coach Jeff Capel took our man Chris Patola around. Jeff, we're backstage at Pitt Basketball. When you first got here and you saw what the decoration was, what went through your mind? <laughs> well, it wasn't much decoration. I wasn't, it wasn't at the level that it needs to be at this level in the ACC. Actually, this wall, there were some pictures up here that I didn't like. I think I had mentioned something to someone a few times about we need to get that down. They didn't after a few days. I just came and ripped it down myself. You tore it down? I tore it down. <laughs> tore it down. I was tired of seeing it and knew we needed to change. So we're hitting the entrance of the locker room now. Yeah, and I'm big on grand entrances. When you enter a place, it should be like you know you're going to someplace very special. And so all of this is new, the doorway, fingerprint. Fingerprint, yep. I like it. Where all the guys have it, where it's private, and you get access, and you enter into the player's lounge. So what did you tell them you wanted? Sometimes you need to get away from your coach. And your coaches, you just need to have a place. I think players need to have a space that's their own where they can escape. And so that's what I want to turn this into, a place where they can come relax, they can escape. You're not working. You're not watching film. You're not watching tape. This is your place to escape and just have fun, relax. Like, this is where Coach Capel yelled at me yesterday. Exactly. The head coach Jeff Capel has really started to build this program back to what it was in the past couple of years. I mean, you know him, obviously. You served on the same staff at Duke. What makes him the right guy for this job? I think he's a home run hire. I do. Uh, he's, he's a good man. He comes from a, a basketball family. He was a terrific player at Duke. Uh, and I think what makes him a home run hire now is that he's been through it. I mean, he's been a head coach at VCU. He learned his lessons at Oklahoma, served under Coach K for a number of years, got that program, I think, to the level it's at now with how good a recruiter he was. He knows the ACC better than anybody. And, you know, look, this program fell on hard times. You know, the last couple of years of Jamie Dixon's tenure were not good. The Kevin Stallings era speaks for itself in terms of how bad that was. So it's a rebuild. 
And Jeff was telling us today, you know, he said, when I took over at VCU and then at Oklahoma, I turned that around in two years. Yeah. So I've gotten a little bit antsy here, and, and you know, I think you have to understand what this was going to take. Yeah, the 2017-2018 season, they were 0-18 in the ACC. Last year, 3-15, but it's a work in progress as Sean McNeil drops down to three. Bob Huggins telling us today this is going to be a much better scoring team than he has had. They put up 94 the other day against Akron. There's a shot for Justin Champagny. Getting in on the action, the 6'6 freshman from Brooklyn, New York. Sixteen fourteen a tight one as expected here in the first half It's about ten minutes to go in the first parlor shot off the mark Xavier Johnson's pass over the head of Audis Tony and out of bounds Coach Capel not happy about it, and there's some of those careless turnovers there. Yeah, we saw that that tour in the locker room, and we're going to show more of it at half. You know, one of the things that caught my eye in there was they he's got a wall of bricks, and, and to, you know, representative of build, read the rebuild and doing it brick by brick, and he's got all the players have signed it. Some of the former players have come back, and they've autographed it, and a really cool thing, and he just... Uh, again, representative of how this is going to take time and, and building a new culture here. McNeil, two for two from beyond the arc. A couple of quick points for Sean McNeil. 6'3", sophomore to Union, Kentucky, transferred from Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. Johnson, a little bit of contact there. Shot no good. Rebound for Pitt. How about the drive Ooh. in the basket? <laughs> That's found money right there when Koulibaly's coming in and giving you points. Some pressure from Pitt, but Chase Harler picks it up. Three on one. Oscar Shibwe. Nice turnaround. And how about the patience? He makes the catch, gathers himself, and able to finish. Oscar Shibwe, 10 points already. Four for six from the field, five boards. Johnson fade away on the baseline, no good. Looking for an elbow there. Didn't get it. Chase Harler in the corner. Rattles Ooh. around. Shibwe, the offensive board. Back up. And in. Oscar Shibwe. Uh, not a good shot on the other end by Pitt. And then Oscar Shibwe <laughs> gathering himself on one end for the catch. There's that catch on the break. Nice shot fake into the jump hook. And then off the break, there's that same play. Nicely done, Oscar Shibwe. If only there was a place nearby you could get one of these. Or these. Good thing. 23-16, West Virginia on top here in the backyard brawl. Oscar Shibwe is having himself a night. The freshman with 12 points, and it was really interesting, Chris. The Athletic wrote a great article about him while he was in high school, and he said, it was said after a game with his travel team in Vegas, a coach came up to him and asked him, are you a machine? And he said, no, I'm just Oscar. And then his teammate came over and said, do you know who that coach was? And Oscar said, no, who is it? He said, that was Coach K. <laughs> and he had no idea that it was Coach K asking him if he was a machine. He was one of the highly touted recruits in this class, and he's showing why tonight. Ryan Murphy, nice move on the Ooh. elbow. Well, I've, I've grown accustomed to not being able to identify who the freshmen are on a team anymore. I mean, there was a, yeah. a day in time where you walk into a gym and you could point them out by their body type. 
I mean, who could walk into a gym if you didn't know Zion Williamson last year? Who would think he's a freshman? Not me. Brandon Knapper for three. Shibwe, offensive board. Shot clock resets to 20, not 30 this year. Part of the new rules instituted by the NCAA. Knapper knocks it down. The sophomore from South Charleston, West Virginia. He could really play. You see him on the ball there. He gets after it. His ball pressure's outstanding. And he shows you on the other end the ability to score. He was a great scorer in high school. Seven on the shot clock. Murphy looking for help. Down low in the slam for Justin Champetti. Twelve points in the paint for Pitt. Six for West Virginia. Don't know if we expected that coming into this one. Culver off the rim. Another chance for Napper. A deep three in and out. Sherman with the offensive board. Shibwe, can they get it in this time? No good. Four offensive rebounds for West Virginia. And a whistle blows here. Here's his dunk on the other end, and again, the penetration, the help comes up, and Champagny sneaks behind Derek Culver, who was ball watching. A nice pass here by Ryan Murphy. And that's where Pitt, they need some of these other guys, Champagny, Audis Tony. they need some of these role players to step up, especially in a game like this. West Virginia, 11 offensive rebounds in this first half already. McGowan's to the rim. Trey McGowan's and Xavier Johnson are just so quick to the basket. It's, it's hard to defend. Nice pass into Evett Matthews Jr. Whistle blows. Three-second call going the other way. Looks like that was on Derek Culver. He'll check out. And Logan Rout will come back in. Tough night for Derek Culver so far. Just two points coming from the free throw line. West Virginia much deeper than Pittsburgh. We've seen Bob Huggins go deep into his bench in this game. Cool belly to the rim. Murphy gets fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Hey, keep in mind, Saturday at 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. The Saturday night football game presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's is a matchup of the top teams in the Big 12. When number 10, Oklahoma, takes on unbeaten number 13, Baylor. Things heating up in the college football season. Things heating up in the basketball season as well. A full house here at the Pete. For this backyard brawl, the 187th edition of it. West Virginia has won each of the last three matchups. Pittsburgh hanging in tight here, trailing by two. I think if you're Jeff Capel, you got to feel pretty good about that. You've given up 11 offensive rebounds. You've turned the ball over. You haven't shot it well. And you're only down two. McCabe thought about it for a second. And he gets fouled as Emmett Matthews Jr. just runs into him there. First foul on Emmett Matthews Jr. Excuse me, that's Champagny.
Jordan McCabe, 72% from the free throw line. He's really good on the court, but also off the court. He's got his own podcast, the Jordan McCabe podcast. That actually looks just like him. <laughs> I haven't listened to it, but that could be a plane ride listen tomorrow. He was a YouTube sensation in high school. A little ball handling displays. He was a good player in high school. Wisconsin Mr. Basketball scored over 2,000 points. Nice dish to Murphy, no good. I do wonder if when Bob Huggins will be a guest on his podcast. <laughs> McNeil, he's on fire from beyond the hour tonight. Three for three. McNeil, the transfer out of Sinclair Community College, led the nation in scoring last year. He averaged just under 30 points a game. Couple of chances here for Pitt. They get the third offensive rebound. McGowan's will set it up again. A lot of contact here. And a three for Trey McGowan. Averaging 15 points a game, second on the team. That's his fifth tonight. Was rated the fifth best prospect out of the state of Virginia. Received offers from more than 40 Division I programs and chose Pitt. The cave shot is a bit short. Pittsburgh finding some rhythm here. McGowan! And the bucket. Bob Huggins not happy about the call. Well, and that's what these guards do for Pitt. Trey McGowan's down the lane, takes the contact, a little soft kiss off the glass. <laughs> Am I saying it well? Lachaim. Lachaim. Maybe you're making okay. Mary. Lachaim. Or maybe you're making Coco. Maybe you're with the family you've got. Oh. Or maybe the one you've chosen. <laughs> maybe there's lights. There's definitely lights. Maybe there's one less this year. Or maybe one more. Our holidays don't all look the same. And maybe that's what makes us great. Make the dream yours. Ikea. Gary, Gary, Gary. I am proud of you, my man. Making simple, smart cashback choices. With Quicksilver from Capital One, you're earning unlimited 1.5% cashback on every purchase everywhere. Like on that new laptop. Quicksilver keeps things simple, Gary. And smart! Like you! <laughs> and I like that! I guess I am pretty smart. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. What's in your wallet? Montez Sweat. Is he right for Old Spice? Montez's name is Sweat. He's also a powerful defenseman in the NFL. Old Spice is a powerful sweat defense in the NFL. Is he right for Old Spice? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's be honest. Every insurance company says they can save you these. In fact, if you had a dollar for every time they said it, you'd have a lot of dollars, which makes it hard to believe, especially coming from a talking lizard. Pip pip, cheerio. Look, all I, Dennis Quaid, know is that insurance is built to save you dollars without skimping on service. And when they save, you save. The only way to know how much is to get a quote. Chances are you'll save time, paperwork, and yes, dollars. When insurance is affordable, it's surprisingly painless. Well, that today's show was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. Oh. What do you think? Let's go diagonal. Number 22 for the Mountaineers, Sean McNeil has been on fire. Three for three from beyond the arc tonight. 
Well, and how about the lift he gives them? This was not a good perimeter shooting team last year, and these are not easy shots he's hitting. But he's just spotting up, getting his feet under him, and taking comfortable shots. And that's where, and again, Bob Huggins telling us today, it's going to be a better shooting team. It's going to be a better offensive team than he had last year, a team that did finish in last place in the Big 12. And Sean McNeil in a two-point game has given them a big lift off of their bench. 12 bench points for West Virginia, four three-pointers made as Trey McGowans will go to the line to shoot two. On the other side for Pitt, they have started to pick it up here as of late, Chris, the last couple of minutes. Well, they started the game one of seven from the field since they're 11 of 17. So I think, I think both teams have settled into this. A lot of fouling early. I think both teams have kind of calmed themselves down and they're making basketball plays now. Culver on the post. The left hand. No good in the rebound for Champagny. West Virginia, one of their last seven from the field. McGowan's the spin move and it goes off of Pitt. Close game to be expected and a sold out Peterson Event Center tonight. McGowan's goes to the floor. Nice pass. To the corner. And Emmett Matthews Jr. knocks it down. It's beautiful basketball. Matthews kept his spacing in that deep corner. And what a find off the penetration. Six points, two for four from long range tonight. McGowan's kicks it and a foul call. That's Samson George. Here's Emmett Matthews and look, he's unguarded. Look at all this space he has and off the penetration. Nice little cross there by McCabe and just a dime to the corner. And that's one of those things where Pitt, you know, defensive game plan wise, they wanted to plug the gaps. They wanted to bring help over. And Matthews buries it. He really came on late at the end of last season. He's, he's built like a basketball player, 6'7". He's put on some weight. The lefty, he is a guy who committed to UConn until Kevin Ollie got fired. He asked out of his commitment, ends up at West Virginia. He's got a bright future. Another whistle underneath. Koulibaly with his second foul. And Coach Capel not happy about it. Both teams in the double bonus. That, that occurred a while ago. Oscar Shibwe will go to line to shoot two. By the way, for those keeping track at home, Shibwe already has a double-double. Well, this is really the coming out game, I think, for Oscar Shibwe. He only had five points in that last game. Got into foul trouble early against Akron. Was two for six from the field. But we're seeing a bit of a different Oscar Shibwe tonight. Well, that's the thing. When you start 6'10", 6'10", they start Shibwe and Culver. There are going to be a lot of teams where it's a tough matchup. And so how you put those guys on that, that four man, whoever that is. Foul called on Jordan McCabe there. The whistle starting to pick up as we reach two minutes left here in this first half. See the foul trouble there for West Virginia. You know, Shibwe, one of those guys who played soccer and was a goalie. Yeah. Like Hakeem. That's, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon, famous for starting as a soccer goalie. Great hands, right? You think you have great hands. But, uh, his, yeah, his family really wanted him to play soccer, and they were pretty adamant about that. I mean, that's an intimidating goalie. I'd imagine so, yeah. Imagine taking a penalty kick against Oscar Shibwe. I also think it's a misallocation of a force. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sticking Oscar Shibwe in the goal seems like a, a, a drastic misallocation of force. <laughs> 
Route looking for Shibway just off of his fingertips and out of bounds. It's one of those passes. You, you, it's a touch pass. You just got to put it up towards the backboard and let him jump and go get it. Fifth turnover for West Virginia here in the first half. McGowan steps back and he drills it. Trey McGowan has 12 here in the first half. And Pitt has taken the lead 35 34, a minute six left to go. Here comes the Oakland Zoo. Napper to the rim. Brandon Napper. Five points for him tonight. Murphy, nice move off the backboard. Chibwe falls to the floor. Napper will pull up from the elbow, no good. Shot clock is off. And it looks like Pitt will try to hold it for the last shot. Pitt does have a couple of timeouts. McGowan's with two left off the mark, and that will be the end of the half. 36-35, a tight one here at the peak. As to be expected. It's been a coming out party for Oscar Shibwe here on the road. A double-double in the first half. Incredible work from the freshman, Chris. It has been, and he's done it all right in that restricted area. There's the high low, the dunk, the catch, the patience. Oscar Shibwe, what a half. Jeff, we're backstage at Pitt Basketball. When you first got here and you saw what the decoration was, what went through your mind? <laughs> well, it wasn't much decoration. I, I wasn't, it, it wasn't at the level that it needs to be at this level in the ACC to compete. It was dark, it was dingy. There was a really dirty, long, like navy blue rug through here. There were, there was a stand back there. And so actually this wall, there were some pictures up here that I didn't like. I think I had mentioned something to someone a few times about we need to get that down. They didn't after a few days. I just came and ripped it down myself. You tore it down? I tore it down. <laughs> tore it down. I was tired of seeing it and knew we needed to change. So we brightened it up, obviously put new floors, wanted to incorporate some of the history. So we put Dewan Blair up here. There was no Panther heads anywhere around here. And so we wanted to incorporate that into the plan and just have a grand entrance into the practice gym. Uh, that was one of the big things. This is a place where our guys spend a lot of time and there should be a grand entrance as you enter. Yeah, well, I know the locker room is a big part of the evolution as well. Let's go check that out. All right. So we're hitting the entrance of the locker room now. Yeah, and I'm big on grand entrances. When you enter a place, it should be like you know you're going to some place very special. And so all of this is new, the doorway, Fingerprint. Fingerprint. Yep. I like it. Where all the guys have it, where it's private and you get access and you enter into the players' lounge. So when I took the job, this is the first place I met my team. Okay. It was right here, and obviously it didn't look like this. There was a little kitchenette area right there, and then here there were two rows there, two rows there of recliners. Okay. And then you go through the door. There's the locker room. Here, it was like a round couch, and there was a TV there with, like, video game console. So what did you tell them you wanted? So, you know, I met with the team, and again, this is my first time in this part of it. And so as I walked around, one of the things I realized, like, there's no film room. And so I asked, okay, where did you guys watch film last year? And that's where they watched it. 
in the recliners. Yeah. And my th first thing was, there's no way my team is going to watch tape in recliners. The other thing I said was that as a former player like you, you know, like I do, sometimes you need to get away from your coach right. and your coaches. You just need to have a place. I think players need to have a space that's their own where they can escape. And so that's what I wanted to turn this into, a place where they can come relax, they can escape. You're not working. You're not watching film. You're not watching tape. This is your place to escape and just have fun, and relax. Like, this is where Coach Capel yelled at me yesterday. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I didn't yell at, and, and I yell at him enough, but we do that. And then we wanted to do this. So they came up with this. I said this during my press conference. And um, so this is kind of the identity of what we want, you know, for our student athletes. All right, and when I first walked in here, the bricks caught my eye. What's the story behind the bricks? Yeah, well, when I took over, I knew it was a rebuild. and. We want to build something. We want to try to establish a really solid foundation, a strong foundation. And so I just kind of came up. You have to do it brick by brick. And these words, these are things that my dad taught me when I was growing up. And this is kind of the motto that we grew up with. And then I wanted each player to sign it. You know, that's their commitment to the program. We have some former players, the coaches, and it's just their commitment to what we have to do. And you have to show up every day. You keep our promises. We appreciate what we have. And we make no excuses. And so it's their pledge to get this thing done. I love it. I love it. Building the program, building yeah. the culture. You got to hold here, man. Yeah, definitely. I like it. I definitely. Like it. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Yeah by brick. That's how they're doing it here at Pitt. We've got a, a look at the Oakland Zoo there in full force tonight at the Peterson Event Center. West Virginia leads by one at the half. This has been a storied rivalry, probably one of the more storied rivalries in all of college sports, for that matter. This is the 187th meeting between these two teams. They played every season from 1917 to 2011. There was about a five-year break, but they're back at it. Each of the last three meetings, West Virginia has won. We welcome you courtside alongside Chris Batola. I'm Sam Ravage. It's a pleasure to have you with us here tonight, Chris. You went to Army and played at Army. You have played in games like this where the rivalry is 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 paramount. It's almost like winning a national championship. What is it like to play in these rivalry games? Well, it, it's, I mean, you're keyed up, right? Yeah. And, and I think there's such adrenaline, and that's what I thought happened early in this game. Not to mention, it's early in the season. I mean, it's West Virginia's second game. It, it's Pitt's third game. So these aren't well-oiled machines, and then on top of that, you add the rivalry element. I mean, look, there were 25,000 that first half, a lot of them early in that half. I thought both teams settled in, um, and the offense flowed a little bit more easily. There was a lot of fouls called in those first yeah. three minutes. Teams were getting into crazy foul trouble early on. Uh, the first half, some of the stats that we saw, yeah. um, it was ugly. There was some ugly basketball played, but it looked like they calmed down. West Virginia has a one-point lead at the half, moments away from second-half action here on ESPNU. Hey, Oscar Shibwe has had a coming-out party tonight. A double-double in the first half, the third McDonald's All-American ever to play for the Mountaineers. Started playing basketball only about five years ago or so, but my goodness, what a display he's put on here in the first half, Chris. He was a monster. Comes in with a big reputation, lived up to it in the first half. You see the 12 points, 12 rebounds. Six of those rebounds were offensive. I mean, they could, they had no answer inside Pitt for that guy right there, Oscar Shibwe. But then on the other side, Trey McGowan's had himself a half. The sophomore, his penetration, I thought, changed things for Pitt. Yeah, you look at the stats there. He's had double-digit points in all four games so far. Him and Xavier Johnson carry this team, but Trey McGowan's really turned it on that second half of the first. And it started with the penetration. He's so quick off the bounce. That first step is so dynamic. He also had two threes. How about that pro move right there? A little shove off into the three. I mean, that is uh, that is high. You know, you give the little you give the little shot. That's high level stuff there, Sam Ravitch. <laughs> that was a push off. I'm calling a the foul there. Uh, look, the second half coming up. What do you expect? What to watch for for both these teams? Well, what's interesting about that half is West Virginia had 11 offensive rebounds, but they only have 11 second chance points. So if you're Pitt, that's a good thing. Here's the thing. 
If they have 11 offensive rebounds in this second half, I don't think that number's going to be the same. So Pitt's got to do a better job rebounding the ball. And then when they get to the foul line, they miss five free throws in that half. They've got to knock those down at a higher percentage. And foul trouble as well. Keep in mind, both teams were in the double bonus with about 10 minutes left to go in that first half. Something to keep an eye on as this one goes on. No doubt it's going to be a physical matchup. These two teams have played each other more than they have played anybody else in their history of their programs. And it's one thing to keep in mind. Jermaine Haley didn't even get to a minute played in that first half. Picked up two quick fouls. Bob Huggins sat on the rest of that half. It'll be interesting to see if he makes an impact, especially early in this second half. Trey McGowan gets it into Xavier Johnson. We are underway here in the second half. Peterson Event Center sold out for the backyard brawl. Johnson double team picked up the dribble. Nice pass down low. And Terrell Brown has it blocked. He also got into foul trouble early on in that first half. He was out for most of that first half. Well, Jeff Capel electing to go big, so he starts with Brown and Coulibaly. So a much bigger front line than Pitt normally starts with to match West Virginia's size up front. Poked away by Terrell Brown and a foul called as Pitt was about to go on the break. We've seen a lot of 2-3 zone tonight from Pittsburgh. We talked about the size of West Virginia. They start Two 6'10 guys up front, two wings who are both 6'7. They are much bigger than Pitt. And there goes Culver to the bench with three fouls. How much does that hurt him? I mean, if, if he can't be on the court, yeah. three fouls, that's a big loss. You talk about his accolades, average 11 and a half, led the team with almost 10 rebounds last year. Ulabali puts it to the floor. Rebound offense for Terrell Brown. Has it blocked by Oscar Shibway. I mean, Ter Terrell Brown's got to, he's got to toughen up in there. I mean, you got to go to finish. Poked away by Terrell Brown. It's going to stay you with the You got to expect contact, man. Like he's had two opportunities to start this half from point blank, and he's been denied. Like that's soft basketball right there. 6'10 junior forward out of Providence, Rhode Island. He's in the top 10 in career block shots for Pitt. His pass. No chance to block a shot there. Oscar Shibway slams it home. It's a man's game up front. And that right there, that guy's a man. He's going to dunk. McGowan's with 10 on the shot clock. Tries the alley-oop to Shibwe, read it well. Out of bounds, and it's gonna stay with Pitt. Or excuse me, going the other way. Now he's open here, but this is how you go. This is a good pass by Jordan McCabe. They hedge hard off the, off the, uh, the ball screen. Nice little flip, and there is no chance to block that. Shibway with the double-double in the first half, has two here in the second. 14 points for the freshman. Jermaine Haley trying to get in on the action. McCabe Ooh. at the end of the shot clock. Athletic play for Jordan McCabe. Four points for him tonight. West Virginia trapping every ball screen up top. That's a carry on Trey McGowan's. Here's the clip, Cade, and you said it. Shot clock winding down, about a second left there. Little flip and bottom on that one. We knew we were going to have a good one. West Virginia up by five. Oakland Zoo.
is packed tonight as West Virginia leads by five over the Pitt Panthers at home. Chris Patola, Sam Ravich with you here at the Peterson Event Center. And the 187th edition of the Backyard Brawl. Here's Emmett Matthews Jr. That's off the mark. And Ryan Murphy with the board. Fadeaway jumper for Murphy. Not a great shot. McCabe with the rebound. Pitt has struggled offensively here to start the second half. They struggled to start the first half as well, Chris. Well, they have six turnovers in the game. Five have come in the first three minutes of each half. Throw that shot into the turnover category. Like you said, not a good shot by Ryan Murphy. That one turned right back over to Jordan McCabe. Logan Rout wasn't expecting it. Matthews is there to pick it up. Terrell Brown trying to get the board. They have had it knocked out on him. And it looks like it'll stay with West Virginia. Virginia fans hate. We had him watch back a famous play earlier today. Pittsburgh with the ball down two. No timeouts remaining for the Panthers. Here's Ramon. High screen. A lot of people have trouble guarding him. Three seconds to go. Benjamin. Ramon for the win. Got it. Pittsburgh wins. 55-54. How cool is it to watch it back now and, and to be a part of this rivalry? It's like in your blood. I got chills. I'm not going to lie. I got chills just watching it. Um, obviously, this rivalry has been going on for a lot of years, and being able to bring it back and be part of it on the other end um, is, is, is special to me. Thank you, Ronald. No, thank you. That was really cool to get to see him watch it in live action. He hadn't seen it before. That, that was the first time we played it, and that was his true reaction. Really cool stuff from Ronald Ramon, and we thank him for taking the time to do that, too. Could you imagine hitting a buzzer beater oh. in a rivalry game? I mean, there are few things in sports that would match that. Xavier Johnson, Trey McGowans, kick it to Champagny. Mid-range shot, no good. Gets his own board and a whistle blows. Champagny will go to the line. Foul is going to be on Oscar Shibway. That's his second foul tonight. He was a great player. <laughs> Ramon, he just was. If I could nitpick for a second, helping off the strong corner, helping off of <laughs> Ronald Ramon in that situation, not a good defensive play. Nonetheless, Sam. But he made the shot. I mean, <laughs> he made the shot. You gotta give the guy a break here. One of the coaches asked, hey, could you make that again? He said, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I would have that as... My screensaver, yeah. it would be playing on a loop on in the my refrigerator, kitchen. Yeah. Yes, it would be everywhere. <laughs> on the ceiling before you go to bed tonight. Yeah. Forty-two thirty-seven. Down to Sheway, poked away. Nice play by Hamilton, but... Recovered by Jermaine Haley. Here's McCabe with a long three. And he knocks it down. They have really gotten some perim perimeter shooting here tonight. West Virginia. Sean McNeil off their bench in the first half. And a great knockdown there for McCabe. Seven points for McCabe tonight. Champagny drives. No good. Pitt has struggled offensively here in the second half. And a carry, Bob Huggins is not happy with the call. I may not be happy at McCabe. Well, it goes in and out with McCabe. He only played nine minutes in the game versus Akron. In the second half, he took a bad shot, and then he gave up a straight line drive. And that was it for Jordan McCabe in that game. But he's got him in the, he had him in the starting lineup tonight. Another foul here. It's going to be on Haley. 
even though he's kind of acting like he may have got it right in the face. That's his third foul, though. Ooh. Well, that's... I don't exactly know how that's a foul on Haley. The official on the other side is signaling it was a cylinder play. Doesn't make Haley feel any better. That was John Gaffney speaking with Haley there. Regardless, it's his third personal. Champagne picks up his dribble there. Xavier Johnson bails him out. Four on the shot clock. Fadeaway shot for Johnson in and out. Almost got that to go. And there's a foul. That's going to be on Trey McGowan's there. Things starting to heat up here at the peak. Hey, keep in mind, this is really exciting. It's finally here. You can download the Disney Plus app right now and start streaming the best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic ad-free and wherever, whenever you want. For more, go to DisneyPlus.com. It's excellent. Uh, do you download it? I have it Absolutely. downloaded. Absolutely. Yeah. It's excellent. I watched Mulan the other day. A really great movie. Excellent film. Mulan? Yeah. That's your I recommendation. Of all that Disney Plus is serving, the Mulan is your recommendation. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of great ones. Mulan has one of the best soundtracks. You have access to the catalog of Disney movies. Yes. And Mulan is the one you pulled here tonight. That's correct. <laughs> Do you have suggestions? What's your, what I have your, many. What, what's your go-to? Mulan would be like 150 no, on the list. Give me a break. Whistle blows. Let's go on the other way. Bob Huggins earlier today asked him, because West Virginia's won four straight in this. Last time they did that was when he was a player back in the 70s. And I asked him, what did the rivalry, rivalry mean? Did it, did it mean as much? He said, oh, yeah. He said, it meant so much, there was either going to be a fight in the stands or on the floor. <laughs> Good ball movement here for West Virginia. Good fake, McCabe. No good route, strong board. Back up with it. Shibway with the offensive rebound. He can't get it to go. And it's gonna go Pitt's way. Couple of chances there. West Virginia just couldn't put the nail in the coffin. Ryan Murphy will head to the bench. You know, again, they, there's two more offensive rebounds and no points coming away from it. I mean, they've just piled up offensive rebounds, 15 in this game, and just haven't been able to convert. Hamilton from the elbow. Oh, for the last five, Pitt has gone cold from the floor. Good takeaway there, Hamilton. We saw Pitt get a bit of a rhythm going in the first half. What do they need to get this offense going? Better shots. They're not getting good shots. And credit the West Virginia defense. They've been so good off of this high ball screen. They're trapping it. And what that does is it forces the ball out of McGowan's or Xavier Johnson's hands. And you're forcing other guys to be scorers. And, and we've talked about it. These other role players for Pitt, they've got to knock down a shot. And they just haven't done it. There's one of them. Justin Champenny slams it home, and that breaks an 0 for 5 route from the field. Culver doing work on the post. Derek Culver's got four tonight. Culver led the Big 12 in rebounding in conference games last year. Averaging just under 11. Almost got a board there. A foul will go Pitt's way. Here's the Thunder out of bounds, and it's not played well. Here's Jermaine Haley, and watch his defense. He's almost so concerned about his guy that he doesn't help. I mean, that's, you either got to switch. Somebody's got to pick him up. 
as Champagny gets to the basket. Not communicated well. Second foul on Justin Champagny. Derek Culver goes to the West Virginia bench. And it looks like could be there for a little while. Got a couple words from Coach Huggins. McNeil, nice drive, nice kick. McCabe follows it up. Can't bring it down. McGowan's to Champagny. It's a foul on the floor there. Against West Virginia. All right, Chris, West Virginia has been known to play really good in-your-face defense. In years past, they've had guys like Kenyon Martin, Javon Carter. Those guys are gone. You see what happened to that last year, 2018-2019. They ranked 261 yeah. in defensive efficiency. Uh, and part of that is, you know, if they're going to press, they need a rim protector. And they lost Sags Kanate last year, did not have him. The thing about their team this year is they're much bigger and longer. And what they've done in the second half, they've basically said, one of these other guys is going to have to beat us. Right. We're not letting Trey McGowan's beat us. And Xavier Johnson has been a non-factor. He's only got four points. He's got four turnovers. Champagny looking for a foul, not going to get the call. It. He did get fouled. Going the other way, Matthews Jr. lays it in. Coach Capel not happy at all with the call. Largest lead of the night for West Virginia, 10 points. Gulabali looking for help. Foul off the ball. That's going to be on Miles McBride. Here's that exchange on the last play. I mean, this is clearly a foul on this end. I mean, that's a foul. And then West Virginia scores on the other end. Nice drive by Emmett Matthews, but that's a big exchange. You get no points on the other end and a layup on the other. Adis Tony loses it momentarily. Matthews Jr. up with it. He'll take it to the rack. Won't get it to go, though. And now West Virginia and Bob Huggins is not happy with the no call there. Maybe a makeup call. Xavier Johnson kicks it to Tony. Just seems like Pitt can't get anything to go. There's a just a rim protector right now. Well, and, and part of it's they're defending themselves. I mean, that's a layup. You got to go to finish that. Again, one of the guards, Xavier Johnson in that case, makes a play, a nice drop off. If you're Odis Tony, you got to go to score that thing or get fouled. A whistle there. Foul will be on Xavier Johnson. West Virginia has won this second half. 13 to 4 if you just count the second half scoring right now in favor of West Virginia. Substitutions for Pitt now. See Gerald Drumgool. Haven't seen much of him. The freshman had a great game. A couple of games ago, and a whistle once again. That'll be the third on Matthew Jr. Hey, Sunday, 3 Eastern on ESPN. The ESPN app number 15, Florida, heads into stores to take on UConn at Gample Pavilion. Should be a good one there. Florida and UConn have both played some tough games meaning close games recently. UConn just lost to St. Joe's a couple of days ago. Pitt on the break. Here's Gerald Drumgool. No good. Rebound for Coolbelly. And he gets fouled trying to go up. He'll have two at the line. Florida's got to find some way to get Kerry Blackshear going. He is such a special player. I thought going into the year he was going to have a chance to be the SEC's player of the year. It's been a slow start for him. They have top five talent. Their offense has just really struggled. How about UConn, too? I mean, yeah. UConn has had a lot of success in years past. Kevin Ollie left. You bring in Hurley, and 
just uh, hasn't really worked out the last couple of years. But we talked about it. One of the commits was here. And Emmett Matthews Jr. committed to UConn and decommitted when Kevin Ollie left. They're in some trouble now. Pittsburgh's in some trouble, too, if they can't start getting some points on the board here. 9.35 left to go in the second half. They trail by 10. McBride to Shibwe on the block. Wow. That's a big man move right there, Chris. That is advanced post play. That is advanced post play. That's a pro right there is what that is. Seven foot five wingspan will help as well. Well, and to think, he's only been playing basketball since the age of 14. Yeah. I mean, to develop that type of a game, that's not what he does consistently, but he certainly has it in him. And he gets so deep. He just uses his body well. The footwork is impeccable. Look at the post. It's a wide body and the touch off the glass. Let me ask you this, Chris, too, because Shibwe obviously has a lot of the intangibles, but what's the next step for a player like Oscar Shibwe? Well, I think if you were to ask Bob Huggins, and tonight's not the example, he's got to be a consistent rebounder. He did not, no, he didn't play a whole lot of minutes in their opener against Akron, but he's he's got to be that guy where everything hit is his, which it has been tonight. Now they're playing a smaller pit team. And then he's got to become, he's been efficient tonight inside. I mean, he's caught it low and he's finished. He's a great kid. I mean, Bob Huggins telling us yeah. today, uh, he's he's a, got a great attitude. He's a, he's a willing learner. He's coachable. Look at those arms. That's a freshman in college. Look at that. Be a pretty good tight end, too. Still a 10-point deficit. And Xavier Johnson just steals it away. Up the floor to Murphy. The alley-oop, no good. Collision course there. And a whistle blows. Foul's going to go against West Virginia here. And it'll be on Emmett Matthews Jr. That's his third personal. Here's Gerald Drumgould Jr., the 6'5", freshman out of Rochester, New York. Ninth team foul for West Virginia, and he knocks down the one and one Drumgould was the number four ranked recruit out of the state of New York. He was a great football player in high school. He was, like you said, he's from Roch Rochester. He was first team all greater Rochester as a wide receiver and a safety. He was a high major football prospect. Like you said, they scrimmaged. They had a closed-door scrimmage against Maryland, and he, he, he played great. Had 17-9 in that scrimmage. Hasn't quite been that player in the early going here for them. <laughs> 38 rebounds for West Virginia, 26 for Pitt. They're being out-rebounded by a 12 rebound margin there. Matthews Jr. going strong. Can't get it to go. Xavier Johnson to the hole. Dishes it back out. And the shot off the mark. No call once again. Throw to the hoop. Off the mark. Xavier Johnson doesn't really want to slow it down. He's got one speed and one speed only. Nice dish yes. to Terrell Brown. And now the Oakland Zoo comes alive here in the Peterson Event Center. Down by seven with 7.40 to go. Matthews Jr. will pull for three, and he knocks it down and quiets the crowd. 13 points, shooting 500 from long distance. That is a silencer. 
Brown from the elbow. In and out. Loader in the lane for McNeil. Offensive board for Shibwe. And he's going to the line for two. Nice little exchange. Last couple possessions. Xavier Johnson on the break here. Nice little drop off to Terrell Brown. Finishing through traffic. But how about the answer on the other end? Emmett Matthews Jr. The silencer. Quiet down, everyone. Quiet down. <laughs> Tis this. He had that, by the way, in the first half, Chris. It was incredibly impressive to watch. Let's look back at also some major conference players to average a double-double last season. There's some big names here. Of course, Ethan Happ at Wisconsin, Jedrick Lawson, Luke May at Carolina, Bruno Fernando at Maryland, John Mooney at Notre Dame. I mean, you can go on and on. These are some really big, big names, Chris. Can Oscar Shibwe be one of those guys that averages a double-double? I don't know if he could. Yeah, I mean, he certainly can. He, the thing with him is he's got to stay on the floor. And so when you open the season where you're only playing 12 minutes against Akron, that's going to be, you know, his biggest hindrance. But if he's on the floor, there is no question about it. He could average a double-double. Again, got into foul trouble early on in that Akron game. He only played about 12 minutes or so. But he's played almost this entire game tonight. Now, he's, he's a pro. I mean, he is the definition of a pro. And he's, you know, he comes in with the, with the big reputation, and he has lived up to it tonight. Shibwe knocks down both at the free throw line. That's also something that he's kind of brought to the table. He's a really good free throw shooter. Pittsburgh's got some work to do to come back in this one. Gerald Drumbull will fire a three. That's off the mark. Strong rebound by the guard, Miles McBride. And it's tough, you know, one pass and a shot. And so much is put on Pitt's ball handlers to create. McNeil thought about a step back. 10 on the shot clock for Matthews Jr. He might have gotten pushed there, no call. Murphy gets it on the floor. Yeah, Pittsburgh is shooting 11.8% from the field, two for 17 here in the second half. Well, this guy with the ball in his hands has to start scoring the ball. I mean, he has not been good tonight, and they needed him. In a game like this, your best players have to be your best players, and Xavier Johnson just hasn't gotten it going. Coach Huggins had kind of his hands up there asking why Shibwe's shooting that from that far out, but Terrell Brown off the front iron. West Virginia a plus 16 rebounding advantage tonight, too. That has not helped Pittsburgh in the slightest. It's another quick shot on that last possession there, too, Chris, with Terrell Brown yeah. firing from Three. Oh, one pass and a shot. McNeil off a pick. No good. And the thing is, Brown was open. I mean, he was wide open, but that's exactly what West Virginia wants. They're getting the ball out of these guards' hands and forcing other guys to score and beat them. Drum goal with the board. He'll go to the line. Nice offensive rebound for Gerald Drumgool Jr. there. That's the fourth on Oscar Shibwe, too. 18 points tonight. Hey, tonight after Celtics Warriors on ESPN and the ESPN app, stick around for Sports Center with Bucci and Michael Eaves. They'll have reaction to the Miles Garrett suspension, plus Boston Golden State reactions and Draymond Green's favorite spots in Detroit. Chris, I'm interested to ask you, too, because it's been the talk of the town. I mean, it's not basketball-related, but what was your initial reaction to the Miles Garrett situation when you were watching it? Well, 
it was a, it was a disgrace. Yeah. I mean, he clearly snapped. Um, it, it, you know, he shouldn't obviously play for the rest of the year. I, I do think to say, you know, what do they have? Five games left, four yeah. games left. I mean, I think that number is arbitrary to just say. I think he probably deserves more. I, you know, I draw the line. At, at saying somebody should be criminally prosecuted. <laughs> yeah. No, in all seriousness. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, things happen in the game of sports, in the field of battle, and it is what it is. This is a fierce battle here, too. 5.06 left to go. West Virginia up by 10. I thought today's shot was good. Mm -hmm. The crowd has quieted down here in the last couple of minutes or so as West Virginia leads by 10. Oscar Shibwe to the bench with four fouls. And Pitt going to pick up here. Force West Virginia to handle against the pressure. Some man-to-man -man pressure. Derek Culver hasn't been a huge night from him tonight either West Virginia with McNeil on the baseline one hand put back for Matthews Jr. He's had a good second half. He has he is smooth the sophomore struggled I thought early in their season last year but came on late nine this half 15 points tonight for Matthews Jr. Down low, a lot of contact there on Hamilton. No foul call. Matthews Jr. has taken over this game single-handedly. 17 points tonight. Longest lead of the game for West Virginia, 14. In the corner, Justin Champagny, an air ball. And then Matthew Ju Matthews Jr. on a run of his own. Last two buckets. There's the offensive rebound on the other side. Shot goes long. And then the lefty gets to that left hand. And when the blonde hair is bobbing, you know he's having some fun. <laughs> Largest lead of the game for West Virginia at 14 points, 60 to 46. 351 left to go here in the second half. Now this game isn't over necessarily, but Pitt has not lost consecutive home non-conference games since 1996-1997. They lost to Nickel State the last home game. They're in danger of losing here to West Virginia. And look, Chris, we talked about it before. You spent a lot of time with Coach um, before this one. But it takes time to build a program. Oh, yeah. I mean, Coach Cable talked about it. Well, none of these guys have won before right. at the college level. Even the guys who are left over. Haley with the steal and the score. And so, you know, they opened the season winning against Florida State. And I think, in part, they felt they had arrived. Right. Showed up with no energy, no spirit against Nichols. Jeff Cable telling us he actually tossed the team out of practice the day prior to the Nichols game because they just... They didn't have the same energy, the same fight, the same toughness they had against Florida State. And then, look, the, the counter to that is West Virginia's got a chance to be pretty good in the Big 12 this year. I mean, this is a young West Virginia team, and they're only going to get better. A little conversation there between Emmett Matthews Jr. and Trey McGowan's there. Things getting a bit chippy here. I will say this though, this rivalry needs to be played every year in basketball and football. And it's a shame that they've gone away from it in football. And I know they're coming back to it. This rivalry deserves to be played. And the fact is neither school necessarily needs each other. They play in different conferences, but they're an hour away. There's a history. This rivalry needs to be played. Yeah, how about when they were both in the Big East too and sometimes they'd play each other twice a year and that the rivalry meant a little bit more 
but still, you can tell from the crowd and the emotion here tonight that it still means a lot. Sixty-two, forty-seven, three twenty-one left to go. Haley, good on the one-on-one. Here's this uh, down the other end, where you know a little, little rabble rousing. Emmett Matthews goes and stands where he knows Pitt's going to huddle. They circle him up, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Just a little kerfuffle. Can't be inside the huddle, my man. Like I said, this rivalry <laughs> needs to be played. McGowan's the alley-oop off the backboard before it touched Eric Hamilton. Culver in the paint, spins, gets a shot off somehow, but it misses the rim entirely, and a whistle blows, and a technical foul called on Matthews Jr., and Bob Huggins is right in his face. He was already close and probably got a talking to at the other end. Right. And well, that and that's why it's good we showed that exchange earlier at the foul line. Replay went for the ball and it, like you said that that reaction won't necessarily draw a technical every time But because of the stuff on the other end you, You're gonna you're gonna draw the ire of an official Five fouls on Emmett Matthews Jr. He has fouled out with 17 points. Yeah, I mean, you look at Emmett Matthews Jr. This is in the second half, keep in mind. One less point than Pittsburgh has had as a team in the second half. When five for 11, Pitt has gone two for 22. Two for 22. That's 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 tough. Well, both parties have to contribute. I mean, it's good defense. It, it also has been bad offense. Pitt has to find some shot makers. You know, Xavier Johnson, again, is off to a slow start this year. McGowan's had a good first half. Those guys have to do a lot of work. They got to find some shot makers. Some fans starting to head out of the Peterson Event Center right now. Hey, Sunday, 3 Eastern on ESPN in the ESPN app. Number 15, Florida heads into stores. Take on UConn at Gamble Pavilion. 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, the other problem for Pitt is they've missed 11 free throws. Uh, you also talk about a shot maker, too, and Ryan Murphy, three for seven from the field today, only took one three. He has been kind of their go-to three-point shooter. Does have 11 points. But he had 28 points the other night off the bench. But you're right. I agree with you. You got to find a somebody to make some shots. Two for 22. Not going to cut it, especially in the ACC. McNeil gets fouled on the shot. It's going to be on Justin Champagny. That's his third team eighth foul. Sean McNeil will go to the line, shoot two with double bonus in effect. Or excuse me, on the shot. We'll shoot two. Sixty six forty nine two and a half left to go here in the second.
Champagny, the baseline. Nice move there for Justin Champagny. He's got 12 points, four for 13 from the field. Oscar Shibwe is set to check back in at the scorer's table right now. Five on the shot clock. McNeil from way downtown. No good, whistle underneath. Oscar Shibwe gonna check back in and he has done it all tonight, Chris. He has, he was a monster. He's been a monster all night, but he was particularly a monster in the first half. Had a double-double by halftime. Did it on the glass, particularly on the offensive glass and at the rim. And then Emmett Matthews in the second half, the smooth lefty has been aggressive, has attacked. And there it is, the tail of the tape for those two guys. What a night. 18 and 17 from Oscar Shibwe, the freshman. You're hearing a lot of let's go Mountaineers cheers in here. It's just about an hour drive, I'd say. That's about right, down to Morgantown from here. And Some Pitt fans finally heading out here with a minute 37 to go. How about that? 19 the last 23 against ACC opponents. West Virginia has won. These are not easy games, especially on the road. By the way, the last time that West Virginia won on the road, 633 days ago. February 20th, 2018. Against Baylor. McNeil in the corner. No well, good. They're going to win some on the road this year. I mean, obviously, they're going to win tonight, but I'm talking in conference play. Big 12 is going to be competitive again, but with their length and their size and with youth that you assume will continue to get better as the year moves forward, they're going to have a chance to win some games. Trap in the corner, Hamilton trying to get out of it. I think it went off of Chibwe's foot there. Is that the biggest difference in your mind between last year's West Virginia yeah. team and this year's the size? And Yeah, well, they're not pressing, right? I mean, yeah. the press, they picked up, but the press wasn't the story. This wasn't the press Virginia of J yeah. Javon Carter days. I think it's their physicality and size up front. They're going to be really dominant on the glass. You're going to have a chance to mash teams on the boards. And they're better offensively than they were last year, significantly better. It's the Mountaineer fans on their feet here inside the Peterson Event Center. As they are about to win their fourth straight backyard brawl. The last time they did that, their head coach was playing. McNeil to Shibwe, and a foul by Champagny down low. Will send Shibwe to the line with just about 10 seconds left. It may not be a conference game, but you can see and feel and hear that it means a lot. Oh, yeah. It's important. And I said to you this morning, I can't wait to see Oscar Shibwe in yep. person. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't expect 19 and 17. Can he get to 20? Yes, he can. 20 points, 17 boards. In your second college game. That's that's some good numbers. I think he's going to be a name. And in this rivalry game. Yeah, he's going to be a name you'll hear for a while. And Bob Huggins, West Virginia, 
Mountaineers come in to hit and win the backyard brawl. Oscar Shibway, 20 points, 17 boards for the freshman. Matthews as well contributed 17 and 8. Hey, that's all from Pittsburgh. College basketball continues next in the American Conference. For Chris Spatola, our entire crew, I'm Sam Ravage, saying so long from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we welcome a new audience here on ESPNU as Houston matches up with BYU. It is the AAC against the WCC. BYU at 2-1. This is their first road game of the season. Houston just started their season on Tuesday with a win over Alabama State. Ted Emmerich, Tim Welsh, so glad that you could join us. This is actually a rematch from a game played in Provo a year ago, Tim, when Houston won at 76-62. Kelvin Sampson, Houston's coach, said that's when we really understood that we could be good. It was a game like that in November. They were replacing four starters a year ago, of course, went to the Sweet 16, won 33 games. They've had to replace four starters this year and trying that steady climb again. Well, that steady climb is a resurgent climb because Kelvin Sampson now, as we said before, has has built an elite program and when you build an elite program which this man knows how to do he's done it at Oklahoma and amongst other places he knows that you have to sustain it year to year build with players that fit your style and that's hungry on defense rebound with tenacity and this year's team is deeper than any he's had here at Houston Houston with Kelvin Sampson in his sixth year and speaking of six he received a six-year contract extension over the offseason, worth $18 million. Uh, there was a brief flirtation with Arkansas, but he decided to stay with Houston, and this is most likely his final stop. Wow, well, this is a great place for him. He's built this into a great place with the support of the university and its boosters. No, no question about it, but Kelvin Sampson knows how to do one thing. He knows how to win, and he's put this whole program on his back. He's came, come up with the ideas. He wouldn't, he wouldn't take no for an answer on a lot of the things that he found when he got here and now we have this here tonight mark pope on the other side his first year as byu's head coach replacing the retired dave rose who is in fact in the building tonight rose a member of the Phi slamma jamma teams in the 80s with houston but pope goes way back with sampson pope from seattle and in the early 90s kelvin sampson was the head coach at washington state sampson the first coach to offer pope a scholarship he signed with Washington, transferred to Kentucky, won a national championship there in 96. But he always remember Kelvin Sampson as the first coach to offer him a scholarship. Yeah, and you remember him as well when you watch the tapes of his team. And last year's 33-win win team was special. But this team, I think, it's built a little differently. They don't have the quick jet-like guards, but they have more size at the guard spot. They have more depth at the guard spot. And then their bigs up front are going to do what they do. They're going to pound the backboards. But there's length all over in that back court with Houston starting 6-5, 6-5, and 6-5 with Jerome Hinton and Grimes. BYU 2-1, their only loss to San Diego State last week. It's a really tough non-conference schedule for BYU. Late in the shot clock, Jake Tilson has his shot rejected by Chris Harris, and it's a shot clock violation. Well, that, there's a problem Greenberg's going to have. We're going to have to drive and kick, set a lot of good screens because Driving the ball into the gut of that defense is not going to be available tonight against the length and quickness of Houston. Harris making just his second career start in three years at Houston. He's given them productive minutes off the bench the last couple of years. Nate Hinton is open, and he buries the three. Well, that's what Houston teaches that their post players and their wings when they drive into the gut of the defense. If they feel that pressure, the second or third defender coming at them, look opposite for the three-point shooter. BYU, the name that is missing here is Yoli Childs as Jake Toulson, the transfer from Utah Valley, who started his career at BYU, matches Hinton with a three of his own. Yoli Childs suspended the first nine games of the season uh, for a paperwork issue as he signed with an agent in preparation for the NBA draft. He withdrew, returned to school, but he's got to sit out nine games. There's Fabian White with the bucket for Houston. Well, there's another issue for BYU. Minus seven so far in the year, rebounding They've been outboarded in every game, and this team they're playing against tonight may be the best that they faced on the backboards. 
And that's where they really miss Childs, right? The leading rebounder in the WCC a year ago. Uh, Childs' numbers are just outstanding, and clearly they're not going to make excuses until they get him back. They're trying to get better, but right now, tonight, they're going to have to play a real good game on the defensive end to play, stay with Houston. T.J. 